This screencast covers the released uh, materials from the New York State Test 2013 and includes the multiple choice selections. I have uh, an interactive quiz on my website, homeworkhelp5.com, as well as a downloadable PDF in which you can take the uh, questions or do the questions and check them through the online quiz and then go through this video to help you find uh, where you went wrong and help you find the correct answers. Let's look at the first one. The shaded part of the square below has a length of 3 fourths foot and a width of 1 half foot. What is the area in square feet of the shaded part of the square? Well, this is a uh, area model very much like uh, what we've done in the modules and typically uh, we would make it look more like this and we'd have uh, three-fourths, at least this is how we do it in my classroom, three-fourths, and we have it times one-half. Okay, we shade our three-fourths. Now we shade half of that, let me bracket this, change colors. We have a diagram that looks very similar to the one that we see to the left. We can see that in both cases we have 1, 2, 3 shaded and out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 out of 8 and the answer is 3 eighths. That one's pretty simple. Uh, again, it's an area model. They provide the area model for you, although you can draw one yourself if you prefer the one that is a little bit more familiar to what you do in your classroom. Okay, this is real straightforward. The key thing to remember with a problem like this is that we have decimals in uh, both of our problems, uh, parts of the problem here in our uh, minuend and subtrahend. So when we write this, we should write it going vertically and not make any guesses. I'm uh, kind of amazed uh, when I go through the practice tests that are done in my classroom, how many people can't be bothered with writing out a problem and solving it. And we'll go through several examples of how to write things out. So again, I have 24 and 5 tenths minus 15 and 75 hundredths. A common error here is to just bring down the 5 here, but we can't do that. What we have to do is do some regrouping here because this in essence is a zero and a lot of people like to write that zero in. Zero minus five, uh, I can't do that. So I'm going to subtract, I'm going to regroup and I change the five to a four and make this a ten. Now we have ten minus five is five. Subtract four minus seven, again we can't do that. Regroup, the four in the ones place becomes a three and this becomes a 14, and 14 minus 7 is 7. I'm going to put that decimal in right now. Remember, we line up the decimals when we add and subtract decimal numbers. Common error is to uh, forget to do that. So now we're going to uh, 3 minus 5, and we can't do that once again, so we'll regroup. The 2 becomes a 1, and we have 13 minus 5 is 8. That's 8 and 75 hundredths. The answer is A. Now again, some people might do something like this, 24 and 5 tenths, and then we have 15 and 75 hundredths. Again, we can't do that. We have to line up those decimals when we add and subtract our decimal numbers. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated, and this is where drawing some tape diagrams is very helpful. Let's read the problem. Mr. Morris built a fence that enclosed his yard. He put up three-fourths of the fence on Monday. On Tuesday, he put up one-sixth of the fence. On Wednesday, he put up the rest of the fence. What portion of the fence did he put up on Wednesday? Well, what we have here is one whole fence. We don't talk about the length of the fence or anything like that, but just fractions of the whole fence. And the whole fence is one. So on Monday, he puts up three-fourths. And on Tuesday, he puts up one six. So I'm just going to label this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We don't know what that is on Wednesday, so we need to find out. Now, this gives us an expression, right? So I'm going to find out how much this part is altogether. 
and then subtract it from 1. That will give us the part. Remember, we have the whole. We're missing the heart part. That tells us that there's subtraction involved here. When we see this, we know that we need to find the sum of those two first. So I'm going to write the expression 1 minus 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. And we'll now simplify the expression in the parentheses. So I'm going to copy down my 1 minus. I need to find, remember, a common denominator here. There's a couple ways I could do that. I'll do it both ways. Some people just like to multiply the denominators. And six, 4 times 6 is 24. So my common denominator in this case will be 20 fourths. And we can simply cross multiply here to find out uh, 6 times 3. Well, 3 fourths becomes 18 20 fourths. And 4 times 1 is 4. So now I have 1 minus 22 20 fourths. And I get 2 20 fourths. Well, I don't see the answer to 20 fourths here. But let's look at our answer. We see that both the numerator and the denominator are even numbers. Therefore, they're both divisible by 2. And we're not going to guess here. We're going to actually divide each of these by 2. And we have 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 24 divided by 2 is 12, and we see our answer is 1 12th. Let's do this another way. I, I prefer this way, finding the common uh, multiple, or the common denominator, the least common denominator, minus 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. Now we have 1 minus my common denominator. I can come up with a smaller common denominator than 24. I can use 12. So twelfths. And I multiply 4 times 3 to get 12. So th the numerator, 3 times 3, is 9. And 1 sixth, so I multiply 6 times 2 to get 12. So 1 times 2 is 2. And now I sim uh, simplify the expression in the parentheses. And I have 1 minus 11 twelfths. And once again, I get 1 twelfth, which is, which is the correct answer. Okay, here's another case where some people just like to read things and kind of guess the answers, but we're going to uh, actually do the problem out. Which statement is true about the product of 5 twelfths times 7? The product is greater than each factor. That means the product would be bigger than both of these numbers. The product is less than each factor. That means that the product is going to be smaller than both of those numbers. The product is greater than 5 twelfths but less than 7 twelfths. Okay, so that means our product is between 5 twelfths and 7 twelfths. The product is equal to one of the factors. That means the answer is either going to be 5 twelfths or 7 twelfths. We need to know these words product and factor. Well, in order to solve this uh, safely, uh, it's, some of us might be able to find the answer. I'm going to actually multiply 5 twelfths times 7 equals 5 times 7 over 12. And that equals 35 twelfths. Bring that over here. And I'm going to change that into a mixed number. And uh, 12 goes into 35 twice. And that gives me a remainder of 11. So I have 2 and 11 twelfths. Now, if I didn't know uh, how to do that in my head, we simply do this. We can divide the numerator by the denominator. And the remainder becomes our numerator, and the divisor is the denominator. Well, let's see which is true. The product is greater than each factor. Well, 2 and 11 twelfths is not greater than 7, so that choice is out. The product is less than each factor. Well, my product is 2 and 11 twelfths. Is that less than my smallest uh, factor? Well, it's less than 7, 7, but it's not less than 5 twelfths. So that, that choice is eliminated. The product is greater than 5 twelfths, but less than 7. Well, that looks promising. 2 and 11 twelfths is greater than 5 twelfths. And it's less than 7. So that's true. Well, we're going to look at that last one. The product is equal to one of the factors. 
No, 2 and 11 twelfths is not equal to 5 twelfths or 7 twelfths. Our correct answer is C. And again, don't guess these, okay? Go through them step by step. When you're taking an important test, a state test or one of your module tests, uh, it's important to not just pick answers, but to go through the procedure and get the answer correct. Okay, this is not a difficult problem, but a lot of people just jump to conclusions. Uh, again, not writing things out, one of my pet peeves. Uh, but let's, let's go through it. Which term can be put in the blank to make the statement below true? So we have 3 million. Notice that we have six zeros right there. Is the same as 30 what? Well, we have 30 thousands. I'm going to write this in standard form. We have ten thousands. I need another zero there. I have one hundred thousands. And I have millions. Well, it's really easy to eliminate the first one, D, because three millions is not the same as thirty millions. So that one's eliminated. If we look at this, this is really asking us 30 times what equals 3 million. So let's just try them out. So I have 30 times 1,000 is the same as 3 times 1. And we collect our zeros here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 30 thousands. Not correct. Let's have 30 times 10,000. 3 times 1 is still 3, and that's 3 tens times 3 ten thousands. We have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, and that's 300 thousand, and that's not correct. 30 times 100 thousand, we have the 3 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. Put in our commas, and we get the three millions. The choice is hundred thousands. The other thing I do here sometimes is I have six zeros here. I have one zero here. What would I have to multiply that by? Well, it would be something with five zeros because I have one zero here, and I need six zeros in all. So I'd have a total of one. Two, three, four, five, six zeros. The same as that. Okay, again, write things out. It's not a race. Generally, there's plenty of time, especially in the multiple choice portions of the New York State Assessment. This one is very straightforward. What is the value of the expression below? Well, of course, we're going to rewrite this with the tableau. They have 700. 138. That's my dividend. The first term of our division problem is the dividend. The second is the divisor. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, I know that 18 is close to 20. And 4 times 20 is 80. And that would uh, be awfully big, but this is not quite uh, 20. But let's try uh, 4 times 18. I guess 72. Okay, that's great. That works. I thought maybe it'd be a little high, and we could have tried a 3, but it actually works. So I take my 72, and I subtract. I also need to put up my quotient, and note that it goes in the tens place, because 73 goes to the tens place, and that's something we need to do to help us keep track of the problem. We'll find the difference. I get a 1. I'll bring down that 8. And 18 goes into 18 once. We subtract, we get a 0, and we can see that the quotient is 41. In order to check that, we can simply multiply 41 times 18. Hey, we're taking a state test. Why not take the time to check our answers out? 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. I'm going to now multiply from the tens place. I get a 41. And we add our partial products, and I get three hundred or seven hundred thirty-eight, which is the same as my original dividend. 
Okay, let's look at this problem. This one is a case of changing a number from a word form to a standard form. So let's read it. 469 and 8 tenths can also be written as. Okay, when I'm doing that, I want to focus on my words, and the word that I really want to focus on is and. Because and means decimal. So where I see the word and, I need to put a decimal. Now I'm going to look to the left hand side and I'm going to read that aloud 469. I know how to write that. 469. We get to the word and. I put in my decimal. Now I have this part, eight hundredths. I want to focus on this word hundredths. This last word tells us how many decimal places we have to the right hand side of the decimal. And hundredths means I have two places because the first place is tenths, the second is hundredths. I have eight in the hundredths place. Note that I have nothing in the tenths place. I must put a zero there. Now let's look at our choices. I can eliminate A and B very quickly because I have 460. Without going into the decimal places, I have 469, not 460. So we're not going to do that. 469 and eight tenths, well that matches what we have. So I'm going to circle that, but we're also going to look at D. Note that in D, that 8 is in the tenths place, not the hundredths place, as we have in our model right over here. So we need to eliminate that. The answer is C. Okay, this one's pretty straightforward. Let's read it. Rich's fish tank is, is in the shape of a right rectangular prism. It has a length of 6 feet, a width of 2 feet, a height of 4 feet. What is the volume in cubic feet of Rich's fish tank? Well, we should know that volume equals length times width times height. I could also potentially make a model here. And just to illustrate things fully, so I have a length of six feet, a width of two feet, and a height of four feet. Let's insert the values. Volume equals our length is six, our width is two, our height is four. We'll simplify the expression. Six times two is twelve times four. Twelve times four is forty-eight. There's our answer. Pretty straightforward. Okay, another one. A uh, fair number of people got this wrong uh, in the results of my class. You, you need to pay close attention. Penelope made a paper chain that was 6 feet 10 inches long. What is the length in inches of the paper chain? Well, we need to keep uh, some conversion factors in uh, place here. We know that 1 foot equals 12 inches. We no longer have reference sheets that tell us that, and frankly by fifth grade we should know it. So I have six feet, and they want to know inches, and then I have ten more inches there too, so six feet, ten inches, how many inches? Well first I'm going to convert my feet to inches. So six times one foot equals six times twelve inches equals 6 times 12 is 72 inches. So 6 feet equals 72 inches. But I don't have 6 feet. I have 6 feet 10 inches. And when I have that, I need to add my 10 inches. Just like if I were uh, 5 foot 4, right, and I want to convert it to inches, I would have 5 times 12 is 60, plus 4 is 64. That gives me the total height, and I get 82. Of course, common errors here is these people who selected B uh, forgot to add the 10 inches. A strange number of students uh, did this. I am trying to think that maybe they multiplied 6 times 10 and didn't pay close attention to the problem. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated. Let's read. Each lap around Eastern Lake is three and three-fourths miles. Janet rode her bike two-thirds of a lap. That's two-thirds of the way around the lake. 
uh, before one of her tires on her bike went flat. How many miles did Janet ride before one of the tires on her bike went flat? Well, some people uh, might be tempted to just uh, take three and three-fourths and subtract two-thirds. Uh, that would not be correct. If we have two-thirds of something, uh, just like we did in many of the problems, so two-thirds of three and three-fourths, and that would uh, mean, and we see that, uh, we've seen many parallels in the module lessons that would tell us we're multiplying those two. Now, a lot of people might do something strange here. They might uh, multiply two-thirds times the three-fourths. That doesn't do it. We have two choices here. We can either change three and three-fourths to an improper fraction and then multiply, or we can use the area model. I'll do both. So I have two-thirds times three and three-fourths equals two-thirds. Three times four is twelve, plus three is fifteen. So I have two-thirds times fifteen-fourths. Oh, I like this because I find common factors. I'm just going to rewrite this again. Times 15, uh, 2 times 15 over 3 times 4. Because 3 and 15 have a common factor of 3. This becomes a 1. This becomes a 5. 2 and 4 have a common factor. They're both divisible by 2. So now I have 1 times 5 is 5. And 1 times 2 is 2. And I can simplify that, or I mean rather change it into an improper fraction. And I can do that by dividing, if I can't keep that straight. And I have 5 divided by 2. It goes in twice. I subtract. I get a 1. So that's 2 and 1 half. Another way to do this is by using the area model. So I'll show you that. I have 2 thirds. We're going to decompose my... Uh, mixed number, 3 and 3 fourths, into 3 plus 3 fourths. 2 thirds times 3 is 6 thirds, and that equals 2. 2 thirds times 3 fourths, well, I have 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 4 is 12, and I know that that's 1 half. I find the sum of the two parts of my area model, and I get 2 and 1 half. So the answer is A, 2 and 1 half. A couple ways to do it. Uh, they both work fine. But make sure that you either change the mixed number into an improper fraction, or use the area model. Okay, this one's expanded form. Uh, so we're going to take standard form to expanded form. Standard form to expanded form. Which expression shows 40 and 54 hundredths in expanded form? Well, I'm going to make a little place value chart here, getting right back to the beginning of the year, module 1. And we're going to consider our places. i got way more than I need here. So this is going to be 1 hundredths. This is going to be my 1 tenths. This is where my decimal is. And here's my ones, my tens. I'll put in the hundreds even though we don't need them. So let's start with our uh, with our number in standard form. I'm just going to put my number in here, 4, in the tens place, 0 in the ones place, 5 in the tens place, 4 in the hundreds place. Now I'm going to translate that into expanded form. I see my 4 in the hundreds place, so that's four, or tens place rather, times ten, plus, I don't have anything in the ones place, so I'm going to leave that one blank. And now I have five in the tenths place, so that's the same as five, times one tenth, plus four in the hundredths place, four times one hundredth. Now, you'll notice they have parentheses um, in the expressions uh, and the multiple choice answers. Uh, you don't necessarily need them, but since they do, uh, I will put them in. Remember, we always multiply before we add because of order of operations. But since the answers have the parentheses, we'll put these in. So I have 4 times 10. Well, 
so far so good with these this guy is out I have five times one tenth well I have uh, five times one so that's out five times one that's out and then we have this one and we'll t check it by looking at the last part part four times one hundredth and that corresponds with our answer here the answer is a